when we treat a ketone or aldehyde with a secondary amine, we can't do beta elimination to establish a CN bond in which the nitrogen is neutral. The best we can do, because that nitrogen bears two R groups, two carbon groups, is generate a positively charged aminium ion. And this can occur in the reaction conditions, but for example, upon aqueous workup with acid or base, this will isomerize spontaneously to form the corresponding enamine. And this is the product we observe when we treat a ketone or aldehyde with a secondary amine. The mechanism and logistics of this reaction are very similar to amine formation. Water is again a product, and this is a reversible process, and so we're going to do something to remove water from the reaction mixture, typically driving this reaction forward, and this is going to power these steps that look unfavorable in the midst of the mechanism. We also generally use an acid catalyst to make this reaction go a little bit faster. The acid catalyst facilitates nucleophilic addition by protonating the carbonyl oxygen. I'm going to go pretty quickly through the next three steps because they're identical to the steps of imine formation. So just to take stock of what we've done, we generated a hemiaminal intermediate, and this happened through acid-catalyzed nucleophilic addition, and then we protonated the former carbonyl oxygen, preparing to eliminate it in a beta elimination step. And that's what happens next. And this too, in fact, happens in the imine formation mechanism, beta elimination of water, really facilitated by and assisted by this lone pair on nitrogen. Just as we saw in the imine formation case, this step produces an aminium ion. But there's an important difference between this aminium ion that we've generated starting from a secondary amine and the aminium ion we generated starting from a primary amine. There are no acidic hydrogens linked to the positively charged nitrogen atom. In fact, the only acidic hydrogens, or the most acidic hydrogens in this intermediate, are those at the alpha position with respect to the C and double bond. And it's deprotonation of one of these that leads to the observed product. Deprotonation at the alpha position, notice that this looks like a kind of elimination process where we're forming a CC double bond and kicking the CN pi electrons up to nitrogen. And this generates a neutral enamine product. This is the essence of what we drew at the start of the video up here. Loss of a proton from the alpha position is what gives rise to the enamine. So let's take stock of what's going on in this mechanism as a whole. We started with an acid-catalyzed nucleophilic addition. Proton went on, nucleophilic addition of the amine to the carbonyl carbon, and then the proton came off, and this generated the neutral hemiaminal intermediate. We then performed an acid-catalyzed beta elimination with protonation of the carbonyl oxygen, beta elimination of water as a leaving group, and the loss of water in this step is what gives rise to the water byproduct of the reaction that we see in the overall reaction. And then a final proton transfer generated the enamine, and the key when secondary amine is used is that only the alpha carbon can be deprotonated. There are no hydrogens linked to the nitrogen. This leads to the formation of a CC double bond and an enamine functional group. Really, aside from this difference in the last proton transfer step, the mechanism of enamine formation is conceptually identical to imine formation. It's a reversible reaction, it uses acid catalysis, and we remove water to drive the reaction forward. 